Dr. Hong is in the infirmary shocked to have found Itu's dead body inside the freezer. She composes herself before quickly informing the captain. Meanwhile, the captain is in the hallways trying to look for a way out after all the gates trap them. Itu's death and the disappearance of Lunar Water both come as a huge shock to him. He asks Chief Gong to continue looking for Luna while he goes to the infirmary through a vent to check who stole the water. On his way, he also calls a crew member, Kim's son, who is nearer to the command center. Upon being told that Ryu might be an imposter who killed E2, Kim's son puts his guard up. He looks for Ryu's location on the panel and sees that he is in the command center as well. Just when Kim's son is aware of its presence, Ryu comes into sight and points a gun at him. He wants to know why the others are looking for Song and what is the deal with Luna. Even though his mission is to kill the others and bring the water to Earth, Luna's presence has caused him to divert from his main goal. He shoots Kim's son on the leg and asks him to reveal everything he knows. Scared, the poor guy tells him that Song went after Luna. When sure that he is about to be killed, Kim's son brings out a capsule and threatens to hit Ryu with it. However, Ryu shoots him thrice, not giving him a chance to react. The capsule also breaks in the process and the water inside starts to spread. To stop it from taking over the command center, Ryu closes and locks the door. Inside, Kim's son begs for his life while Ryu watches him die. Soon, he vomits gallons of water and hallucinates himself falling into a deep sea and drowning. Eventually, after much struggle, he dies on the floor. Even after his death, his body doesn't stop releasing lunar water at an outrageous rate. Ryu watches this with a shaky breath, finally coming to terms that he killed his teammates. However, he is too far gone to look back at this point. In the meantime, Song is with Luna, who is now asleep. After seeing that the little girl had her sister's picture, Song feels a sense of responsibility toward her. Then, she notices a hard drive on Luna's bed. She doesn't waste much time before going through it on a computer. The drive has all the information about the Lunar Water Project. Song also finds an archive of videos starting from the very first experiment. In the first video, she notices her sister in the group of researchers. They drop a few drops of lunar water on a fish inside a box. The water molecules act as usual and multiply rapidly, eventually filling up the box and giving the fish an environment it can survive. Next, Song discovers another archive named Luna. This is when she finds out that the experiments were not just performed on animals, but on a cloned human girl as well. The little girl's name is Luna 073 because she is the 73rd clone of the child and the only one who survived the cruel experiments performed on her. Everyone else was treated like guinea pigs and killed. Song watches each video of the clone's death, frozen in shock at the cruelty and nonchalance of the researchers. Then she finds a video of her sister explaining that she wishes the experiment end soon. She is also one of the researchers who killed the children, thinking that it is for the sake of humanity. Now that Song knows about her acts, she doesn't know how to feel about her sister. She imagines talking to her, but the conversation is short and it brings her no peace. A while later, Song injects a capsule of lunar water into Luna's leg, which heals her injury. Meanwhile, Dr. Hong is also on her way to the command center to find and control Ryu. She has to use the vents because the doors are locked. However, while doing so, she slips and falls into a storage unit that is not on the map. Although injured, she tells the captain about what happened and starts looking through the room. To Dr. Hong's surprise, she finds a room filled with dead clones inside zip bags hung on the ceiling. There are about 72 children who were killed in the lunar water experiment. The sight makes Dr. Hong fall to the ground in disgust. Just then, the captain arrives and calms her down. He is also as shocked as Dr. Hong at the site. They walk through the hanging corpses and find an exit on the other side of the room. At the same time, Ryu is trying to disable the air purification system so he can run away and leave the rest of the crew to die. However, while doing so, he finds a pressure anomaly forming on the base. It is then revealed that the water that was in the basement has multiplied and has filled it to the brim. It is now a threat to the entire base, which might flood any second. The captain and Dr. Hong manage to get out of the storage unit and enter the command center. They find Kim Sung's dead body, which makes it clear that Ryu's goal is to kill everyone. 
After that, they finally unlock the doors that Ryu had locked earlier. The chief then goes to look for Ryu while Dr. Hong goes to the main lab and waits for everyone. Because the doors are now open, Gong can also make his way to look for Song and Luna. Luna is now completely comfortable around Song. She even tries talking to her and asks her for more candies. Suddenly, they are interrupted by Gong, who thinks of Luna as a threat. He wants to kill her, but Song stands in front of the little girl. Through a device, the captain tells Gong to bring Luna to the lab alive. Only then does he keep his gun aside. Luna runs outside through the hallways while the other two follow her behind. When she takes a wrong turn, Song asks her to follow them the other way. Gong doubts that she will obey the orders, but Luna surprises him by doing as told. A relieved Song tries to follow her again, but stops when a drop of water falls on her face. This means the lunar water has entered the crevices and vents, and the base is at risk of being flooded. Outside, the sun starts to set, and the temperature drops at an exponential rate. The water freezes, giving the crew some more time to escape. However, the water inside the temperature-regulated areas in the base is still flowing. Amidst the chaos, the captain finds Ryu and attacks him. The betrayer can hardly fight the captain, unlike how he was with his other targets. The captain manages to disarm him and keep him in a chokehold. When Ryu realizes he can no longer fight, he tells the captain that only he knows what happened in the base five years ago. Ryu seems to know something that everyone else doesn't, and the captain gets distracted, which gives him a chance to escape. They point their guns at each other when suddenly, lunar water breaks from above Ryu. He falls to the ground knowing that his death is near. A flashback shows us how the researchers were killed in the base five years ago. It turns out the government was secretly being criticized for the project and an investigation was about to be held. To avoid being exposed, President Sho sent soldiers to kill all the researchers and frame it as a radiation outburst. That way, no one would want to come to the base with the fear of being killed. Song's elder sister was the chief researcher and she too was killed in the fiasco. Other than that, Ryu was one of the soldiers responsible for abandoning them at the base. He regrets that day, which is why he thinks humans do not deserve water. Back in the present, the hallways of the base start filling up with lunar water. The captain meets Song and the others in the lab and tells them about Ryu's death. Suddenly, Song feels sick and starts suffocating. She remembers the drop of water that fell on her earlier and locks herself in another room to keep the others safe. Soon, she starts vomiting water and falls unconscious. In her dream, she also sees herself drowning in the sea and meeting her sister. When she wakes up, she finds herself on a bed with Dr. Hong beside her. It turns out that her vitals are returning back to normal even after being exposed to lunar water. Dr. Hong believes this might be because of Luna's bite that acted as an antibody. The captain wants to bring Luna and the samples back to Earth, but before that, they have to make sure Luna won't be at risk of cruel experiments again. The captain calls Mr. Kim from SAA and tells everything that is going on. Mr. Kim discloses that he has started a protest against Cho, and people at SAA have also begun to see the Lunar Project for what it is. He promises to make sure no one gets a monopoly on Luna and the water if they are brought back to Earth. With his promise, the only thing left to do is find the capsules that are with Ryu and return home. A while later, the captain approaches Luna and puts a tracker on her leg. Although skeptical, she allows him and forms a connection with him as well. Then, her eyes land on a sticker on his bodysuit. It was given to him by his sick daughter before the mission. A flashback shows us that his daughter thought the sticker was a way for him to return to her anytime he wants. Although the sticker is very close to him, he hands it to Luna without hesitation. By now, Gong has prepared everything for their departure. They make their way towards the exit, but have to stop when Luna comes to a halt and puts her ear on the floor. She can hear the water flowing towards them, but before she can tell the others, they start hearing the noise too. They immediately run towards the exit while closing the doors behind them. Still, the water follows them, breaking all the doors with force. On the way, the group comes across Ryu, who is still alive, but not in good condition. He holds them at gunpoint, threatening to kill them if they take a step further. Gong shoots him dead, but before dying, Ryu also manages to shoot him. The crew then runs to the exit and wears the spacesuits. The captain tries his best to help Gong, but the injury is too serious for him to survive. Eventually, he passes away. 
After everyone is dressed, the captain quickly tries opening the door, but he notices that the system failure has caused a malfunction, which means he will have to manually press a button from the hallway for it to open. When no one is looking, the captain goes to the hallway and closes the door in between. Song notices this and begs him to return, but he has made his decision. He will have to sacrifice his life for them to reach outside safely. The door finally opens and the water enters the hallway. On the other hand, the captain dies while on the other, Song and the group get to save their lives by stepping outside. When they are fully out, Song sees a helmet on the floor. Moreover, Luna is nowhere to be seen. The water in the base comes out through the windows and crevices, but freezes instantly. Song and Dr. Hong eventually find Luna looking at the Earth without a spacesuit. It is then revealed that she has completely adapted to the moon's environment and can live here normally. A while later, Luna finds the captain on the verge of death. He was thrown outside by the force of the water. In the last scene, she hands him a pin and watches him die. It is then narrated that the rescue shuttle found Song, Luna, and Dr. Hong and brought them back to Earth. Furthermore, the Earth is made safe for Luna because Mr. Kim has dethroned Cho. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thanks for watching.